So I thought we'd talk about the complete list of Babylon B prophecies that have come true. So if you load up this article here, this is an article that just lists dozens of Babylon B headlines have come true. Here's the complete list. And if you scroll down, it, it really is. It's been put out by the uh, the guy who runs Babylon B, Seth, and he's got this huge ass spreadsheet of just story after story after story of, of things that happened. And I checked them out, and some of them I must be like, eh, you know, I don't know. But I thought I'd pick out the best ones, and we just go through and take a look at uh, why the Babylon Bee is basically the most trusted source in news. So, <laughs> it used to be The Simpsons, didn't it? Yeah, and now uh, if you want to know what the future's bringing, it's uh, the Babylon. I love what they say in this here. The first headline reads, Captain America's reboot as a feminist, atheist, transgender, Hydra agent, which was originally published in 2016. And by 2021, the Babylon Bee was right. <laughs> Marvel had named the latest Captain America an LGBTQ activist. So there you have it. Of course. You know, another prophecy. But I thought we'd just go through some of the ones I found funnier. So we'll start off with the next one here. Inclusivity win. State of California to make all prisons gender neutral. Ah, oh, wonderful. Quote, the current prison populations are segregated by the harmful, binary, socially constructed gender conspiracy and uh, we will be combined beginning January 1st of next year. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Can you say progress? With California leading the way towards progress once again, we certainly hope other states will follow suit and stop segregating their prisons by the gender fairy tale. I for one am touched deeply <laughs> by this fake news. Except, of course, within a couple of years it was real. We go to the next one, so this is three years after. California Governor Newsom signs law requiring transgender prison inmates to be housed based on gender identity and not on reality instead. The law says officers must ask inmates privately during the intake process if they identify as transgender, non-binary, or intersex. These inmates can then request to be placed in a facility that houses either men or women, based on their preference. We got rid of the gender fairy tale, folks. It's kindly gone. <laughs> I, I find it so strange that it's just like, yes, you're a criminal. You can be trusted with this one decision. Yeah, so I think you've made a series of terrible decisions. That means you're here. Mm -hmm. But now we'll give you the one of uh, please don't rape our inmates and they'll tell the truth, <laughs> I'm sure. But also, just uh, the fact that, of course, prisons aren't segregated along gender lines. They're on sex lines. Mm -hmm. It's male sex, female sex, not how you feel inside with your fifis. So then someone even saying, my fifis don't align, well, they were too bad. These are sex-segregated spaces, but apparently that didn't go into anyone's head in California. The California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation cannot deny requests solely because inmates' anatomy, sexual orientation, or a factor present among other inmates at the facility, the law says. So reality be damned. Don't their legislators have more important things to deal with? Doesn't California have a massive homeless problem and drug problem and lots of problems that they should probably be focusing on before they're just like, well, we need to think about the feelings of our prison inmates. Well, That's really important to The us. Babylon Bee hasn't come up with their solutions yet. So as soon as the Babylon Bee does, then California will presumably do ah, it. Of course. That's yeah. where they get their ideas. The law also requires officers to address transgender inmates based on the pronouns of their choice, and it requires officers to search inmates based on the search policy of their gender identity as well. So a bloke can uh, say, I'm a woman. Woman's got to search me. And uh, <laughs> they have to. They can't even say no. Well done, the Babylon Bee. I, it's a beautiful prophecy that came true. If you go to the next one, we then have the other prophecy here. President Trump declares the Babylon Bee his most trusted news source. It's like three <laughs> days later, <laughs> Donald Trump tweets satirical Babylon Bee articles saying Twitter was now would Twitter was down to protect President Biden. So there you are. There we have it. It's just <laughs> like, yep, he does pretty uh, use the Babylon Bee as his most protected news source and trusted. Uh, because it's true as well. And uh, he wasn't proven wrong by the subsequent articles. We go to the next prophecy. We have striking blow against toxic masculinity. Man graciously allows wife to shovel driveway. Makes you <laughs> proud to be a progressive. One man has taken the message of Gillette's new toxic masculinity campaign to heart. Quote, I've always just assumed that in our family, I would be the one to clear the driveway when we got snow, Camp said. But after seeing the video, I decided to start breaking down the stereotypes passed down from my father and his father before him. So this weekend, when 12 inches of snow fell, I swallowed my pride, handed my wife the new, the new shovel, and told her I was going to let her do it. <laughs> you have to feel very proud of uh, Gillette for their inspiration that has caused millions of men around the country to let their women start a shovel the snow instead. Thanks, if, Gillette, for letting us get off the hook for all of our chores. Yeah, and if we go to the next one, now there's some guy who did get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> my name's John here, so even after a 12-hour night shift at the hospital last night, my wife still has the energy to shovel the driveway. God bless her and our frontliners. Time to make her some breakfast. 
I love it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. She found the energy, did she? Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> not not <laughs> yeah. you. It's it like, takes a lot of energy to photograph it and put it on social media, don't you know? To make breakfast, I mean, good God. Mm. It's not a terrible task. Whereas uh, uh, shoveling the snow for your wife, not so much. So if we go to the next one, we then have another prophecy. Biden vows to return nation to era when the press didn't bother reporting on presidential scandals. Quote from Biden. Fake quote, of course, before YouTube strike us down. Quote, back when I was in office, we had plenty of scandals, but it was much nicer because the media just didn't report on them. It was a more pleasant way to watch the news. The press just told you everything was fine in the White House. The former vice president then listed numerous scandals of the Obama administration, such as targeting political enemies with the IRS, Operation Fast and Furious, spying on opposing political campaigns, and then bombing foreign countries around the clock without a declaration of war. Quote, I mean, can you believe the mainstream media didn't touch those, he said, laughing. I was sure they'd nail us on something, but nope, we were in the clear. <laughs> Uh, and then this is obviously became true. If you go to the next one, the Hunter Biden laptop story. ABC, CNN avoid explosive Hunter Biden reports. Other networks give it fewer than five minutes. Study finds. Yeah. I mean, yet again, Babylon B. There before the news. Mm -hmm. There before the actual situation happening. I mean, it, declaring what will happen. It was only what a link to what was then the, one of the main presidential candidates' sons holding back money from. I think it was China and Ukraine for Joe Biden the himself. Guy. Yes. Yeah. But also I just mean, the fact that they openly ignored it mm -hmm. being important though. I mean, it's it's not an important issue of national security at all, is it? I mean, you know, these these things, these pesky sums of money that seem to be landing in Biden's lap where yeah. he's been a, a career politician yet worth multiple millions. I mean, I don't know how that happens, but I mean, there we go. I'm sure it's completely honest, isn't it, YouTube? That's right. Well, yeah, I mean, you being directly in the pocket of the Chinese, you would have thought would be cause for concern, but no, no, not for the people who, well, also have them in their pocket. If we go to the next one here, we have a, another prophecy that was brilliant. California school system to feature mandatory second grade field trips to gay bars. That was in 2019. They prophesied this. Quote, it's important that our kids receive a comprehensive education, Newsom said in a ceremony marking the bill's signing. For too long, kids in our elementary schools uh, today have not had the fully interactive LGBTQ plus experience. Sure, they can go to their local library and have a drag queen read stories to them. They will have a drag in uh, show themselves in their schools where they can. But now they can go and dance at gay bars as we applaud their actions. But it's not enough as well from Newsom there, but of course in a fake <laughs> quote. But if we go to the next one, we then have libs of TikTok breaking news. A school district took an elementary age kids group to a gay bar on a field trip today. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> there you have it. It's just, this was a year apart, I believe. Uh, wonderful. I mean, this is why people should just read the Babylon B, if for no other reason than frick the use. Like the, the news will have any old crap and it may even be wrong. Babylon B, yeah, it might be wrong, but for how long? <laughs> that's the question <laughs> if we go to the next one here we then have uh, the final one which I think is probably the best one for me personally AOC is now selling tax the rich caviar for just $10,000 a can other products on the light on the uh, signing include tax the rich monocles tax the rich top hats tax the rich luxury cars and tax the rich gold necklaces with a giant dollar sign pendant included <laughs> there's also tax the rich rare diamonds mined from the tomb of an ancient king yeah, I mean, it's a bit over the top, but then if we go to the next one, of course, we then have AOC going to the Met Gala with her Tax the Rich dress on as well. <laughs> Individual tickets at the gala well, being $35,000. Yeah, the lack of self-awareness there is astounding. It's like, yeah, Tax the Rich, you're surrounded by them, rubbing shoulders with them, unashamedly. As a friend, mm. not as a combatant. You're, you're not a wolf in the hen house. You're another hen hanging out with the other hens, being rich as hell. Single table at the Met Gala was $200,000. Wonderful. <laughs> it's good to be rich, I suppose. But there we have it. There's the Babylon Bee prophecies and why, frankly, people should probably read the Babylon Bee instead of anything else. <laughs> because, <laughs> as I say, it may be wrong, but for how long? If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the interview Carl did with David Rearboy. And if you want to follow Carl and see what else he's putting out, you can follow him on Getter at at Carl Benjamin on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.